welcome to another episode of the Sound Design Blog. I'm Michael Hoyer. Today, we're going to be going over how to control Main Stage 3 via MIDI through QLab 3. There's a lot of threes going on. But you might be asking, like, why would I want to control Main Stage 3? Well, in the theater, there's a lot of application for having an outboard reverb processor. Usually, the inboard reverbs and delays just kind of sound like crap. So we look for efficient alternatives that aren't going to break the bank. And this is a great way to do it. Now, what does Main Stage 3 normally get used for? Well, a lot of times you'll have somebody with a MIDI keyboard connected to Main Stage 3, and it allows them to have multiple patches and so multiple instruments pulled up at any point, and they can switch between them so that when they're playing a live show, they have multiple instruments that they can just go to right away with presets. But the other use for Main Stage 3, you can actually use it, as I kind of mentioned, as a reverb processor, which is a really wonderful thing to have for, say, musicals or even just a, a moment where you need a strong reverb on stage. And controlling it through QLab 3 is a real breeze, and it allows you to go through multiple patches, so multiple different reverbs and delays. Like, for each song, you can kind of cater to it, and that's a wonderful little tool. So I'm going to show you how to do that. So what you're going to need to do, you just go into QLab 3 here. We have it up. And you're just going to go to MIDI. You're just going to do a MIDI cue. So you drag that down. It's present right there. And notice it has an X. Well, we're going to go to settings. It doesn't have a MIDI destination. And you might be wondering, well, how do you control something internally in the computer with MIDI? Don't you normally have to have a cable and an interface? Well, yeah, normally you do. But Apple does this wonderful little plugin that you just got to go into your applications, you go to utilities, go to audio MIDI setup, and mine actually brought up my MIDI screen because I use it a lot. Um, normally, you have to go up to window and go to show MIDI studio. Otherwise, you're going to get show audio devices. That's usually what you see. That's not what you want. You can X that out, go to window, go to show MIDI studio, and you'll see this screen. Now, I have a lot of little things here that you won't have on your screen. Uh, they're just old plug-in stuff. But what we're looking at today is the IAC driver. And I just double-clicked it there. And this is the IEC, blah, excuse me, IAC driver. And I'm going to delete these because these are not what you would standardly see right off the top. But what it is, it's an internal MIDI busing system within the computer. So all you do, you open it up, you get this little properties dialog box and you just need to check devices online and that'll make connectors for bus one live so once that's done you can actually just x out of it close out of your midi setup come back over to qlab and you notice it already did the patch and it'll say one iac driver bus one and you might be thinking like okay cool it sounds like we're doing a show control kind of thing it's not msc keep it in musical midi and what we're going to do you go to Command, and you go to Program Change, and it's going to say 1, and then Program Number 60. Keep it on Channel 1. That's what the computer wants to see for Main Stage. And then just go to Program Number 0. Now, that seems kind of weird that we'd go to 0, right? Well, when you're doing a Program Change, you got a number 1 below, typically, to call up that scene number. So let's go over here to Main Stage 3. And we're looking at the natural vocal patch I have going on here. It's just a standard thing. So you go up to the left here. You look down here in the attributes of the patch settings. And it has program change checked. And we have 001. Well, the 0 in QLab will call up 001. And just for the sake of us having two things to work with, I'm going to go ahead and hit plus, And that just made a new patch. You can title that how you want to. Um, if it was a musical or something, I'd say like sound Q2. Um, name of the song, I'm doing Rocky Horror right now, so let's say Science Fiction. And that brings that up, and it says My Song Science Fiction. So you'll notice down here that we have a program change decision we can kind of make. If we go to that one, it's 1, it goes to 2 there. Well, we want this to be 2. So it says program change, make it 2. And that'll become clear in a second when I explain it. But what we're going to do... 
We're going to come over here to the channel strip. Right now, nothing is set up to get the input going. So we're going to go ahead and hit the plus up here on channel strips, do an audio, mono, because that's what I have coming in, and input, it'll go out the mains. And just so you know, on your interface, it's going to look for your main outputs, and it's going to go out of one and two typically. So when you're doing a DAW control, it's going to most likely be found at one and two. You can reassign that if you want to, but I'm kind of okay with it. I like knowing it's there. It makes me feel more comfortable. So we're going to go ahead and I'm going to bring up the main volume on this output because right now I have it down all the way because it plays in the background and that's somewhat annoying to hear while I'm trying to talk to you. But as you can see, audio is routing through it. It's going through and you can hear it. What we're going to do, and actually I didn't mean to hit EQ. I don't really want the EQ. We're going to go to audio effects and we're going to look at audio units. Main stage has its own specific reverbs and effects and stuff. Um, space designer's great. Delay designer's great. I actually like the tape delay better. I personally prefer to use waves. Um, now granted this is, I have waves gold. It's like 500 bucks for a student. Totally worth it as an investment. Um, you can go into a reverb and as you can hear, it's pretty pronounced. Um, yeah, which is what you want. And you can control these just like you would, your outputs, whatever you want to do, set it to whatever you want it to be. And a lot of this comes down to your mix, but as you can hear, we're getting the effect. I'm going to mute it just for clarity sake. But like I said, you can see that's two there. So let's go back to QLab and see how this actually integrates. So right now we have one right here, and that's going to go to the natural vocal cue that we had initially there. I'm going to hit Command Copy, Command Paste, and that was Command C, Command V, and go ahead and renumber this right away. And the benefit of doing a copy paste with your MIDI stuff right away is you can just hit up on the arrow and that sets it to program change or program number one there. But let's go back to one, fire it, and you notice in the background it switched. Um, I'll unmute this so you can hear it. Ooh, ooh, reverbs. Fun. Anyway, you can hear it in the background there. And we'll go back into QLab and say we get to the science fiction queue. You just go ahead and hit that and it switches it over. Pretty slick, huh? So you might be kind of wondering, well, Michael, cool. You showed us how to do the MIDI thing. That's fantastic. How am I actually going to integrate this? How does, how does it actually need to be patched? Well, what you're typically going to do your audio interface that you use, you're going to go ahead, and this is how I like to do it. Just It's a little old-fashioned, but whatever. I tend to do a send on my board. So that can be like aux1. Make I, I love using my auxes. But you can use aux1 and do a send out and do it directly into your interface's input 1 or wherever you want it to show up. But do it into your interface's, the interface that's connected to your computer. Connect it to the input 1 on that. Then when you go into main stage, you're going to go to preferences. And usually when you make your session, you can choose this stuff. Your audio input is going to be your interface. Mine's a Scarlet 2i2. And then your output when you're in this situation is also going to be the interface you're using. For the sake of recording the video, I have to use built-in output. But normally you would go to your Scarlet 2i2 or whatever interface you're using. And then it'll come out on channels 1 and 2 on that. Um, so then you take those and you route them back into your board on open channels and that's where your reverb is going to come back and you can assign it however you'd like to. And yeah, essentially that's how it works. And it's really delightful to use. The other benefit, when you're using QLab, you can actually share the interface. So it can be going out of one and two and you could be shooting sound effects out of those same outs. I, I preferably don't, but like you could if you want to, and you can actually share these drivers at the same time. So it's pretty sweet. That's what I'm doing right now with my current design. And yeah, I thought I'd go ahead and share that with y'all. I learned it from a wonderful sound designer here in Kansas City who was designing at the Kansas City Repertory Theater. He was the sound designer on an Iliad and yeah great little tip from him. I'm just passing it on to you. 
So go ahead, check it out. Go out there, design, frolic. As always, go ahead and go to our website, thesounddesignblog.com. Interact. Feel free to ask me any questions you want to. Pick my brain for free. I'll happily tell you what I can on the question. Also, feel free to go to our Facebook page, and that's just facebook.com slash thesounddesignblog. Interact. Post as you will. Feel free to ask questions. Spread it around. Um, We're still getting videos up every week, despite texts that have just been happening but i'm staying on top of it for you so go ahead and interact i'll keep pumping them out and y'all have a great week keep designing